What's up YouTube, Pragmatic Pete here, and today we're gonna to be changing the wheel hub bearing on our driver's side. Uh, but before we change it, I wanna show you how to diagnose it. So in this particular truck, whenever we turn right, we get a grinding noise coming out of the truck. And that would make you think, uh, maybe the right wheel bearing is out. But it's actually counterintuitive. That may be the left wheel bearing. And even though that is counterintuitive, there's an easy way to check just to make sure. First thing you wanna do, jack up the truck, put it on jack stands, and make sure it's nice and secure. So here we are at the passenger side wheel, front wheel. We have both wheels jacked up. We do have jack stands and a jack also under the truck to make sure that we're safe. Got our gloves on, and we wanna try to wiggle it this way and this way. Uh, now because both of the wheels are up, we could, we can turn the whole thing. So that's normal, and I just locked the steering wheel because I turned it too far, but um, that's normal because we have both wheels up, the whole uh, assembly is moving, the steering assembly. Well, it's not normal uh, is if we shake the top and bottom and get a lot of play. So here, you can see there's not a whole lot of play. There's no noise, nothing. So this side, seems pretty solid. So let's check out the driver's side and you'll see the difference. Now here we are over at the driver's side. And we're gonna do the same test. Keep in mind we do have the wheel up in the air so it is gonna turn a little bit, but you have movement here without actually turning the steering. And then if you do from the uh, 12 o'clock and the six o'clock position, you can actually hear the bearing slapping up against the, uh, the hub. Listen to this. So let me zoom in and give you a little better view. It's not a whole lot of play, but any play is bad. So now the next thing we need to do is take off the wheel, take off the brake caliper and rotor, take off the wheel hub assembly and replace it. In this vehicle, it's a sealed assembly, so you cannot just replace the bearing. But honestly, even if it were, it's not that much more expensive to replace the whole hub uh, and it's probably worth it because pressing those bearings in and out can be a major pain. Uh, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lower the car or the truck onto the ground and then we're gonna take off the spline nut in the center. And this truck has a somewhat unique uh, assembly setup. And most of the assemblies I've looked at in videos and on even the service manual, it shows a castle nut in the front axle. This is not going to be a tutorial for that. This is going to be for if you have the two wheel drive version that uses a spline nut instead. The tools you need are relatively simple and the job itself is relatively simple on paper, but you are potentially going to run into some problems. So I'm going to give you all the tools you need and all the tips that I used to get my job done. Okay, and here are all the tools that you will need for this job as well as some optional tools that will help you out. First off, you will need a half inch torque wrench that can go up to 190 foot pounds because that is the torque spec for the wheel spline nut. You will need a new wheel spline nut. This is the one that came off of the truck. Uh, it even has it printed on there. Do not reuse. If I get to focus. Do not reuse. So when they take the time to uh, make a custom mold for something that says do not reuse, it's worth buying a new one. These are about $5. Uh, it helps to have a half inch ratcheting wrench. The biggest breaker bar that you can get for breaking that axle nut if you're not gonna be using a torque wrench. Um, and over here we have our sockets. We used a 19 millimeter to remove our lug nuts. We used a 21 millimeter to remove our caliper bracket mounting bolts and we used a 35 millimeter to remove our axle nut spline. So that may be different for different vehicles. I've noticed it seems to, to vary greatly, but this is a perfect fit for my vehicle. Uh, so if you do have the different setup that uses the spline nut instead of the castle nut, 35 millimeter should work for you. Okay, other things we need. We used a wire brush to clean up our hub spline or our spline shaft once we had it off. Uh, rubber mallet will help. A big hammer will be a big help because in my particular case, I did wind up having to do quite a bit of hammering. Uh, some penetrating lubricant. Uh, this is Chris Fix's special mix. It's 50% acetone and 50% um, automatic transmission fluid, full synthetic. We got some copper anti-sieve to put over the splines. We got blue Loctite to put on our bolts as we put them back in. Scouring pad to help us clean that spline as well as we could. 
And we did try using a three jaw puller to remove the hub. And uh, in my case, the hub literally just broke apart on the spline. So it was a, a very, very difficult job for me. The spline puller or the um, three jaw puller, uh, it pulled it out a little bit, but it got to the point where the center of this tool was drilling into the spline and uh, causing some damage to it. So I stopped using that. I didn't want to cause any more damage. And if you do rent this tool, uh, this one is from AutoZone and it is a 16 millimeter on the end of that. So it would help, uh, for this whole job, it would help to have a pretty strong torque gun, uh, impact gun, but you don't absolutely have to have it, although I do strongly recommend it. Um, in my case, like I said, the hub came off, but the outer race bearing stayed on the spline. So I had to hammer that out and it was a quite a pain in the butt. So I just used a whole bunch of different little punches to get in between the spline and the actual bearing or the race bearing and hammer it out. Uh, and I also torched it for a little while to uh, help me with that. Of course, you will also need a wheel hub assembly. Now I did buy the $100 Duralast version, but after doing this job, I wish I had spent the extra $50 to get the Moog um, because it's just a, it's a quite a difficult job. At least it was for me. Uh, and some of the videos I've seen for my specific assembly, uh, they got that hub off like it was nothing. It wasn't even, they used one hand. So, but mine was seized on there. So it's up to you what kind of part you want to use. Um, I do believe this is a two year warranty. And if you get the Moog, it is a three year warranty. So another year for $50 more. And also recommend safety glasses anytime you're going to be using uh, any lubricant or spray because getting brake clean in your eyes, getting uh, acetone or transmission fluid in your eyes never feels good. So it does look like a lot of tools, um, but good news is the 35 millimeter axle nut or axle nut tool and the 250 foot pound torque wrench can be rented from AutoZone or O'Reilly's as well as the three jaw puller. So your big torque wrench, your axle nut, and your three jaw puller can be rented. Um, it's about $300, $200 for uh, all three, and that should be enough to get you through. So let's get started on this job. All right, now that we have the truck back on the ground, we're gonna remove our center cap. You can use a flathead screwdriver, anything like that. I've got a little dentist pick that makes things nice and easy. And this exposes our 35 millimeter spline nut inside. So let me show you that. Okay, and this is where our 35 millimeter socket that we borrowed or rented from AutoZone comes into play. So if we can open it up, here it is. It is a big one. Let's make sure we're gonna stick it on the end of this extension here. This is a half inch drive. And this is a giant, well not a giant, but a breaker bar with a large extension. We're gonna set that in there and make sure it's a snug fit. And it is. And we're gonna go ahead and crank this off. And this guy is sitting at um, about 175 foot-pounds is the original torque spec, so it's going to be quite difficult to get off. So we're going to make sure that we are in park. We're going to make sure that the parking brake is set. Anything we can do to prevent this thing from rolling, we're going to do that, and then we're going to try to crank it off. Now, if the bones in your body start creaking and cracking and you start feeling like you might break something, it might be time to get a breaker bar, a bigger breaker bar, or an impact gun. So we're gonna grab our impact gun and see if we can knock it out with that. That's warm. We're gonna crank it off just a tiny bit more. Okay, now we're good to jack the tire back up and uh, we'll remove the wheel and we'll start pulling our bearing after we remove our caliper and rotor. <clears throat> All right, now we've got the truck jacked up. We're gonna go ahead and remove the wheel. Again, I'm using the power tool, um, but if you just have a lug wrench, that works perfectly fine. Okay, now that we have access to our caliper and our rotor, we're gonna go ahead and remove the bolts in the back. And from the back of the caliper, 
you can see we have our guide pins right here and directly under that is the bolt we're going to remove on the bottom side directly beside that guide pin is the other bolt we're going to remove so now that we've got the knuckle facing this way we have access to our two 21 millimeter bolts they are going to be on there pretty tight and i cannot get an impact wrench back here so i'm going to be using chris fix's special penetrant lubricant uh it's 50 percent acetone 50 percent synthetic transmission fluid full synthetic and we're going to spray some of that on there and i have eye protection on um, because last week i got some brake cleaner in my eye and it didn't feel very good it didn't feel very good a lot. So we're gonna spray a little bit of this on our two bolts, and we're gonna give that just a minute to sit. Note to self, I need some clear safety goggles because it is dark in here. And so our memory card died. We had about two minutes to let these bolts sit. So let's see if we can get them off. Oh, wow. Either that wasn't torqued on very well, or this penetrating lubricant is awesome. Let's try the other bolt. Wow, one hand, nothing. Okay, now that we've got those broken, we're gonna grab our ratchet and we'll take them off. All right, we have our bucket over here to rest the caliper uh, and rotor assembly on when we get it off, because we don't wanna let it hang by the brake line. And uh, so let's take it off. There's one. Keep in mind when you take the second one off, the whole thing's gonna fall off, including maybe the rotor, depending on if it's rust welded on there. It's not. So we're gonna have the whole assembly come off as soon as this bolt is out. And it would have been smarter to leave that other bolt in there loose uh, to provide a little bit of support, because now this bolt has all the weight of the caliper and rotor on it. But I'm not known for making smart decisions. And the caliper won't just fall off because it's still on these hubs, on these lugs. So it'll be supported by this. But just be ready for it. Okay, now we got our two caliper bracket bolts off. We should be able to remove the whole caliper and rotor assembly. And it's gonna be a little bit heavy. Okay, we will clean that with brake clean before we put it back on, um, but have our caliper and rotor safely supported over here. Now we have access to our hub. Let's see if I can turn this. I believe the steering wheel may have locked on me. That's fine, it's a great camera angle. So we're gonna go ahead and remove our spline nut here using our 35 millimeter socket. And we did loosen it, but Chances are we're still gonna need the impact gun because it's up in the air. Wouldn't hurt to put some of this penetrating fluid in there too. All right, now we'll grab our 35 millimeter socket, slap it on there, and torque it off. Okay, and there's our spline nut, which we are going to replace because if a company makes the effort to put do not reuse on the hardware, it's probably a good idea not to reuse the hardware. This was $5 for a replacement at AutoZone. Just listen to this wheel bearing. There's no weight on it whatsoever. You can see how out of round it is. That's a bad bearing. So good thing we're replacing this. Okay, now that we have our spline nut off, we should be able to grab our three jaw puller, put it right in the center. We'll grab our three claws, put them on the edges, and then screw it down and pull right out. Once you have your three jaw puller attached to the hub, you wanna grab the appropriate socket and tighten it down. In this case, our AutoZone puller is a 17 millimeter.
We're gonna put some eye protection on just to be safe. We have a great small gap, but we're still kind of a little bit. Okay, we got some earplugs and we're just going to continue to beat on this thing until it comes out. We are seeing some movement. Uh, it's just slow going. It's an old, you know, 18-year-old uh, truck with 140,000 miles on it, original bearings. Well, original hub, this vehicle wasn't well taken care of, so we knew it was going to be difficult, <clears throat> but we'll get it. Let's put some more penetrating fluid in here. Okay, some things have transpired, but the most important thing to note, my shirt has changed. But our gear puller is not really doing the job, and it's actually damaging the spindle. Uh, so we're gonna change to a slide hammer and try that out. The old saying is, if at first you don't succeed, get a bigger hammer. But I believe it's actually, if at first you don't succeed, try a different hammer. So check out the spindle damage. So it's actually grinding that out a little bit and I definitely don't want to continue I definitely don't want to continue to uh, damage that so we're gonna try the slide hammer method which shouldn't cause any stress to the spindle and our claw doesn't fit over the uh, hub so I guess we're not gonna try this we're gonna go get another claw all right so we went to the parts store and we tried getting a slide hammer but they did not have a slide hammer assembly that fits on this hub. I went to two different auto parts stores. Uh, so their solution was, get a bigger hammer. So we'll see if this works. I have earplugs in, eye protection on. The ear, earplugs are just because it, I'm in a kind of a small area and banging metal with other metal gets kind of loud. And I don't feel like going deaf. I got it. So I wish I could tell you there was some magic trick to doing that, but the honest answer is I used the, um, the three jaw puller to get it out as far as I could. The slide hammer, the claws didn't fit. And the solution was to just smash it with a hammer for well over an hour. Uh, so we got it out. Our bearings went all over the floor. So we're gonna clean up this mess. I'm gonna get the rest of it off. And make sure, hopefully I don't have any issues with that because uh, we do have some residual on here. Uh, and then we should be able to just put the new one on, hopefully. So these filthy little cylindrical things are roller bearings. Uh, so this is a roller bearing hub, uh, but the one that you put on isn't a roller bearing. So 
kind of interesting to know. The replacement is just a normal sealed 